Well, hello again, how's everybody doing? Uh, here we have a Hornby King Stephen. Uh, this was sent to me by Adrian. He said that this won't go backwards and that he can't get the underframe off. Um, so let's try it forwards first of all. Turn on the power. Nothing. No, nothing going forwards. Try it backwards. No, nothing forwards or backwards. Well, that's not running either way, so it's uh, officially a non-runner. Uh, there's only one thing for it. Shove it into the shed, get it to the bench, and take it to bits. Alrighty, hold on. Let's get a wee look at this. Uh, I do like the kings and castles. Um, very nice locomotives. Um, this looks okay from the outside. Let's have a look underneath. This is made in China. Um, oh, that's not right. That should be stuck in that little groove there. Yeah, right, okay. Um, Adrian did say he couldn't get the underframe off. Um, the screws do look a little bit stripped. So they've probably been over tightened. Right, so Adrian said this uh, was only running in one direction, but uh, as you saw there on the, the layout, it's not running at all for me. Um, I think this may be DCC ready. So there's a possibility there's uh, a problem with the PCB or the uh, the blanking plate, or it could be a pickup issue, could be a motor issue. Who knows? There's only one way to find out. Let's get it apart. We'll get the sponge for this. We've got the brake rods on, we've got three screws for the underframe. Front bully, there's a big screw there which probably holds the body on. There's a screw underneath the underframe that holds the tender on, or the drawbar anyway. But we'll see if we can get the body off and then hopefully it'll be easier from there. And that'll give us a look inside, see what's going on. Um, can I get into this screw just? Then lift out. There we go. That's a DCC chip. Uh, righty ho. I'm going to have to uh, have a word with Adrian because that this is not DCC ready. This is DCC. Let's just pull this chip off. Gently prise it off. And stick a blanking plate in here and see what happens. Yeah, that chip's blown. So let's try sticking this in. There we go. That's all it's been, a blown chip. Uh, yeah, I'll need to speak to Adrian because I didn't get any details about that. I need to check if he's wanting to run this on DCC. If, if so, he's going to need a new chip. Um, and that's not really my territory. Um, but if he's happy to run it on DC, he's good to go. But we'll give it a wee service. So we'll see what he says. Okay, so while I'm waiting on Adrian getting back to me, um, we'll have a look at the worm gear and we'll get the underframe off and give it a bit of a, a clean and some fresh oil and uh, clean the wheels and it should be good to go. Uh, right, we'll get this off. Like that. Yeah, that's... Uh, Pretty gunked up. I think that's probably been part of the reason that chip is blown. Isn't it? Yeah. It's the old earwax again. I actually think these modern locomotives is more important than ever to keep them well serviced. Um, you know, I just don't think they take too kindly to 
drying up, especially whatever grease Hornby puts in there solidifies and then you get uh, running problems and too much stress on the motor. I think it might be better if I get the motor out of here. Stuck on with the black tack. High tech stuff. Right. Now I can get the give us another blast with the contact for that. And give it a going over with the manky brush. Do these gears lift out? Yes they do. See all the dried up grease on there. To one side and we'll give this gear a good clean. That was a pipe cleaner. And pop that back in. This motor bracket back on. Some oil in there. Get some nice silicon grease to the gears. Pop that back on. There we go. Lock that in. Right, okay. We'll uh, get a look at the axles. So we'll need to remove this under frame. Um, so we need to take these brake rods off before we do anything else. Then, let's see if we can undo these screws. Yeah, that one's a bit strut. Come on, here we go. Yep, bigger screwdriver. Here we go. And a crosshead screw if the, the head's a bit stripped. Just try a slightly bigger screwdriver. Usually works. And we've got clips at the back there. Does that then let me lift this out? Yes, it does. The wheels of this front bogey are absolutely filthy, so they're going to be really clean. Uh, right. Horrible clips. Uh, cocktail sticks, I think, for this. One in there, one in there, and then does this under frame now come off? These are really nasty clips at the back. Honestly, Hornby, what on earth are you thinking? Completely unnecessary. You've got three screws. You don't need that clip at the back. Just ridiculous. Right. Also held on with part of the valve gear there. Pewing. Come on, you come. We've got pickups. We've got a wire. Yeah, we've got a wire. Of course, we've got a wire. Much of that through as I can. There we go. 
So now I can get in to clean the pickups, clean the axles, rear axle is sprung. They're actually not bad, but we'll get the uh, manky brush in just to get some of the fluff, static grass and all sorts. The drive gear looks very dry. I think we'll get some gear oil in there. The axles themselves are pretty clean. We'll give them a wee scoosh. Let that evaporate off, and then we'll get some fresh oil in. Pickups look okay. We'll give them a wee clean. Tender's fine. So yeah, I think this will be fine once we get it cleaned up and back together. Right, while well, waiting on the uh, contact cleaner evaporating off there, we'll uh, clean the wheels in this front bogey. The number of times I see front bogies and they're absolutely filthy because people just don't think they matter, I think. Um, and yeah, the dirty wheels won't really affect the, the running of the locomotive, but all that dirt is going to get onto your track and get passed on to everything else. So. You know, it's kind of important to keep all your wheels clean, not just on your locomotives as well, your wagons, coaches, everything. Try and keep your wheels clean. It, uh, but when you've got a lot of uh, stock, it's uh, a bit much sometimes to keep on top of it all. Uh, let's just see how bad is that dirt. Yeah, it is pretty bad. Put some tea cut on these wheels, I think. They're so bad. Funny things, wheels. Sometimes tea cut works, sometimes contact cleaner on its own works, and other times you have to take the rotary tool to them. I guess it depends what metal they're made of and what condition they're in. You know, if the wheels are actually in good condition, they're easy cleaned. But older ones, like you, you get on old trying locomotives and stuff, the, the plating on the metal gets very pitted and cracked. So really a rotary tool comes in and smooths it all off. We'll get some uh, fresh oil into the axles. If I can find oil, where is it? There it is. Right, then and there. Bearings in place. And then this should, should clamp down into Position. Click. Okay, the back. We need to get the front bogey in. And then that is that. Get the valve gear engaged into those little bits there. Remember to never, ever over tighten. And the frame screws. Just tighten them until they stop. Like that. We'll give the wheels a clean. Uh, they're actually not too bad, so we'll give them a clean with some contact cleaner. Right to there. It should go nicely on the test track. Okay. okay. Nice as nine pins. Right, okay. I'll wait till we hear back from Adrian and then uh, we'll get the body on and get it onto the layout. Okay, so Adrian got back to me and <laughs> he bought this on eBay and the seller had told him that it was uh, hardwired for analog. Anyway, it's now DCC ready with a nice new blanking plate, so uh, it'll be fine. Right, let's get the body on, and we're done. Uh, we'll get this sponge back into play. Right, that wants to go into that slot at the back. And then that wants to go in there. It was out of position before. That one's okay. Okay, 
come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, he's got that wing in. There we go. This is just really awkward because you can't really remove the front bogey easily. And there's no convenient hole to go through the bogey to get to this screw. Let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, I don't that screwdriver. Let's try going in this way. Come on. There we go. Right, okay, everything in place. I'll tell you what we'll do that we haven't done, and that's give all the roads a wee spot of oil. There we are, done. Right, let's go and pull it out of the shed. Okay then, let's bring it out. Okay, so there we are, that's King Stephen sorted and running very nicely. Um, yeah, the problem was that uh, this had a DCC decoder fitted, which I think is burnt out. Um, you know, I can see that one of the components on the board is, is melted. Uh, I don't have the means to test a decoder, so whether it had been DC enabled or not, I have no idea. Um, but the fact that Adrian said it was running in one direction on the DC maybe indicates that it was uh, just on the blink. Um, but fitting a blanking plate uh, to make it DC only has sorted it, so that's fine. Uh, the front bogey makes weak clanking sounds because of the uh, the way it hooks in between the chassis and the underframe. 
It's, uh, it's not the greatest design that, but uh, otherwise it's a really nice model. Uh, it's not the nicest thing to work on. Uh, the clips on that underframe are just ridiculous. Uh, but there we are, done, sorted. I'll get it packed up and ready to go back to Adrian. Catch you later, folks.